So I have been reading this book and there are some types of weeds that I know for sure I have seen in my backyard and even in my veggie garden. I have been pulling them out for the last three months thinking that they were nothing more than a nuisance that was getting in the way of me growing vegetables when in reality I could have been eating some of these. So I am going to head outside and just see exactly how many different edible weeds I can find in my little suburban backyard here in Brisbane. <laughs> So this is everything that I have collected. Some of them I'm pretty confident that they are edible, others I'm not really sure but I just thought I would pick them and I'm going to use these two books to see if I can identify them. Obviously I will only use the ones that I am 100% sure of. Foraging for edible weeds is a fun and rewarding experience but it's important to take the proper precautions and ensure that you're harvesting safe and healthy plants. Always identify the plant correctly. Only harvest in safe areas that haven't been contaminated with pollutants. Avoid harvesting plants that are past their prime. Don't take too much. Wash and cook before eating. Start with a small amount and learn from experts. Okay, so this is amaranth, which I already knew I had because I've actually planted some amaranth and I was looking at the weed and I was like mm, this really looks like what I planted um, but it's slightly different so the seeds here in the flower oh I just dropped it but they're all around here they are edible and the leaves are too and these leaves actually feel quite soft and like a nice texture so I feel like that will be nice Purse Lane, oh my gosh, this stuff was everywhere in my garden earlier this year. It would just spread like crazy and I was leaving it in because I thought it was good for the soil uh, in the patches where I hadn't planted anything yet and I had no idea that it was edible. So that's what this one is. Scurvy weed I have all through the garden bed in my front yard that I am turning into a bush tucker like native edible garden and the leaves are edible apparently they are like spinach and it also produces these purple flowers which are really pretty and also edible so a bulk of what is in my basket is actually scurvy weed there was so much um, and I am so glad that <laughs> I know what it is and that it's edible because it was really annoying looking at it being like oh I'm gonna have to keep pulling this out of my bush tucker garden but now that I know I can eat it I can just leave it and let it do its thing. Uh, flatweed and cat's ear is this one. It is similar to dandelion which I, I think I have in my front yard but I didn't pick any. I am not sure if that patch of grass is somewhere that Rojo goes to the toilet and I didn't want to eat something that he may have peed on so I left that uh, but yeah flatweed and cat's ear uh, similar to dandelion and edible so the leaves on flatweed are noticeably hairier than the ones on cat ear so I would assume that this one here is flatweed because the leaves are very noticeably hairy uh, whereas some of the other ones, that one's hairy, ones like this, are oops, not as noticeably hairy. So this is super common and it says in this book that pretty much anyone who has a lawn will have these and it's definitely true, they were everywhere. And I've noticed them in pretty much every house I've ever <laughs> rented and lived in. So this one here is wood sorrel and it kind of looked similar to this other weed that I had but they are different you can tell by the shapes of the leaf uh, the wood sorrel is much more rounded and 
This one is really interesting. The flavor is described in the handbook as kind of being lemony. And when I had a nibble, it actually tasted really nice. So these are all of the weeds that I just found in like a five or 10 minute walk around my yard. I'm sure that there are more out there and I'm sure that as we enter spring later in the year, I will definitely notice more. So the next thing to do is figure out exactly how I can cook and eat these, <laughs> which is gonna be super interesting and I'm gonna try and do something for dinner tonight with at least one of these. All right, I have sorted all of the good leaves and things from the ones that didn't look so great. So this will get composted and this will be consumed. So I'm adding basil pesto, but I think you could make a really nice pesto with some of these. Overnight, I have been dehydrating some of the leftover weeds. I have noticed that the amaranth is getting like nice and dry and crispy, but the uh, scurvy weed has still got a lot of moisture in it. So I'm gonna have to separate those out and keep dehydrating this one until it's just as crispy. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to process them all into a greens powder that I can add to my smoothies and things that I cook. I also discovered another weed when I went to take Rocco for a walk. So this one is so thistle. It's similar to dandelions. Uh, the main difference is they have multiple flowers from the one uh, stem as opposed to dandelion, which will always have the one uh, yellow flower. So not gonna eat this one, but good to know that there was another type in my backyard. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head out into the garden uh, and make us myself a smoothie. And I'm gonna put some of the purslane and a few of the greens that I foraged yesterday in my smoothie. I think it is so cool that we have this abundance of delicious and nutritious plants available to us in our yards and in public spaces in suburban areas like here in Brisbane. I think this is a great way to have accessible, free <laughs> food readily available for people, particularly in situations like the uh, current cost of living crisis that we are experiencing here in Australia. And I also just think it is a great opportunity for you to learn a little bit more about uh, the things that grow in your local area. So I really encourage you to just learn a little bit more about the weeds or if you're keen, definitely give foraging a go.